20 tips to help guests mind their manners and show common courtesies while dining in other people's homes. Welcome. Most of us will not have the privilege to implement these manners and common courtesies today, but I assure you that there will come a time where you will be in a situation where you are going to want to know the proper etiquette to be a guest. This video covers any time of the year, so when that time comes, you want to be prepared. I say all the time, failing to plan is planning to fail. You don't want to learn these common courtesies after attending a house party. You want to know them before. That is why today's video comes to you at a perfect time. Most of what I share with you today will apply whether you are dining in someone's home or you are dining at a restaurant. Understand that etiquettes are different in different cultures and countries. I live in the United States, so I know the common courtesies in dining etiquette for where I live. If you live somewhere else in the world, please take what I share with you today and see how it applies to the region that you live in. The tips that I share will apply for a smaller dinner party where maybe it is just you, your significant other, and another couple, or maybe there's a few couples, or maybe it is a larger gathering. This really applies to a seated meal, but if you do attend larger gatherings, it's not uncommon to see the food served buffet style. Many of the manners that I share with you today will apply to any situation that you can be in. Once the host reaches out to invite you for dinner, it is very important that you RSVP promptly. That does not mean that you need to RSVP on the spot. In fact, I would encourage you not to. You may have to check in with your spouse or significant other. You may have to see if a babysitter is available. Regardless, you want to make sure that you let the host know promptly if you will be attending or you will not. This will help her in preparing for the guests that she will be hosting. Typically, you will RSVP the same way that the host reached out. If the host reached out through an email, feel free to respond to that email. If they call you and leave a voicemail or they just call you and talk to you, you typically would want to respond back the same way. If it was through text message, feel free to respond through a text message. This is also going to be the perfect opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may need to know prior to the dining experience. If the host did not mention bringing the children, then they are not invited. If you are at all in question, feel free to circle back and confirm. Do not ask if you can bring the children, respond back with your RSVP saying, I just want to be clear, the kids are not invited, is that correct? The reason for that is you don't want to put the host on the spot. If the kids are invited, she will respond back and say, no, please bring the kids, they're welcomed as well. If your kids are not good with table manners, it may be in your best interest to get a babysitter, but never assume the children are invited. Generally, if the party is later in the evening and cocktails will be served, the children will not be invited. This will be an adult-only gathering. Also, you never bring an uninvited guest. If the party host invites only you, then only you attend. If they reach out through a text message and say, what are you doing next Saturday? We would like you to come for dinner. It's okay to circle back if you are in question to be certain, but never respond back in a way where you are imposing on them that you would like to bring someone. Let them determine that and they will happily communicate that back. Offer to bring a contribution to the dinner. If the host declines the offer, do not bring anything. If the host tells you to go ahead and bring a dessert, be sure that you either bring a homemade dessert or a dessert from a gourmet shop. You don't want to bring a brownie mix that you made. 
You don't want to pick up cookies at your local grocery store. It is important if the host asks you to bring a dish to pass or a dessert or something, it shows that you put effort in either by making it yourself or going the extra mile by purchasing something from a gourmet deli or a gourmet bakery. Arrive on time. Do not arrive early, arrive on time and within five to 10 minutes late if there is a window between cocktails and dinner. That's very important for you to know. If the host invites you over at six o'clock for dinner, I would confirm with the host that dinner is at six. Typically, when someone reaches out and asks you to come to dinner for six o'clock, you are not going to eat until 6.30 or seven. It's disrespectful to show up prior to six, but you want to make sure you arrive close to six. Once you arrive, you will have some time to settle in, to mingle, have a cocktail before dinner. Let me add in, it's never acceptable to be late for dinner. When a time is set for the actual sit down dinner part, it's very important that you are already ready to go. You have already removed your coat, your shoes, you've used the restroom, and you are not holding the guest up in any way. Once you arrive, put your cell phone away. Silence it and put it away. Put it in your handbag and put your handbag someplace off to the side. I understand that periodically you may need to check your phone. If you have a babysitter, it would make sense that you need to check in periodically. The important thing is you are going away from where everyone is at to check your phone. That's why it's important to keep your handbag off to the side someplace or in another room. It is extremely disrespectful to check your phone during dinner. When you sit down for dinner, do not expect that you will be getting up for anything. Plan on using the restroom prior to dinner. Like I just mentioned, it's very important that once you are seated and the meal has started, that you are not getting up unless it's absolutely necessary. Let's just say you need to blow your nose, which you would not do at the table. You would stand up, excuse yourself, you do not need to share where you're going. Do not say, excuse me, I need to use the restroom. Just stand up, say, excuse me, do not say anything more and go to the restroom. Dress appropriately. This is not a wedding reception. This is a dinner party in the home. It's important that you dress appropriately. If you are in question at all about what is appropriate to wear, ask the host prior to the party or ask what she will be wearing or how are people going to be dressed if there's going to be several couples or several people attending. Bring a hostess gift, very important. The exception would be if the host did ask you to bring a dish to share, let's say a dessert, then I would not feel obligated to bring a hostess gift. But if not, do not come empty handed, always bring a hostess gift. It is important to be prepared that the host or hostess will not be opening your gift when you arrive. You will walk in and you don't want to immediately shove the gift to the host. Say hello, maybe you give a hug, maybe it's a handshake, whatever it is for your culture or whatever you are comfortable with. Then you will give them the gift that you brought. Do not expect that gift to be open. Generally, the host will put the gift off to the side, someplace inconspicuous where no one else will see. One of the reasons for this is not everyone brings a hostess gift. So to be courteous and consider other people's feelings, a good host knows that the gifts should be put off to the side where no one else can see them. The host is also really busy because they are attending to food and they are attending to other guests. So it's very important that whatever you bring does not require any work from the hostess. Do not come in with a bouquet of flowers that need to be put in water in a vase. She is not going to have time to do that. There should be no extra work imposed on the host. Never have more than one 
pre-dinner drink. Generally, everyone will be standing around, mingling, having a drink, and communicating with one another and catching up. If it is not indicated where you sit at the table or the host has not instructed you on where he or she would like you to sit, it's important to ask. Do not just go seat yourself anywhere that you would like. Also, be sure to not sit down at the dinner table until the host goes to the dinner table and seats themselves. That is when everyone else will be seated. Watch the host or hostess. They will be giving cues. Pay attention, be aware. It's not uncommon for a host to say, go ahead and sit wherever you would like. If you are attending a more informal gathering and you are going to be seated prior to dinner, which the host would instruct you to, make sure that wherever you sit, that is where you plan on sitting to eat your dinner. You do not want to sit in one spot while you're in communication with other people. And then when dinner starts, you sit somewhere else. It's important that you stay in the original seat that you were sitting in. After being seated, simply unfold your napkin discreetly and place it in your lap. The fold of the napkin will go towards you. You will take the napkin, you will fold it in half under the table, typically to the left-hand side, again, very discreetly. You will place it on your lap with the fold towards you. Never shake your napkin. Sit up straight. Avoid slouching, leaning, or putting your elbows on the table. Leave a little space behind your backside. That will help you to sit up straight. Do not start eating your meal until everyone is seated. Watch for cues from the host. Typically, you never start eating your food until the host picks up their silverware. That's a cue to you that you pick up your silverware and you can start eating. Speaking of silverware, flatware, cutlery, whatever you would like to call it, use the appropriate silverware at the right time for the right food. Don't forget we always work from the outside in. It's important that you know your silverware and what it is used to eat. If you need help with that, watch my dining etiquette video. There are many dining etiquette table manner and common courtesies mentioned in that video as well. Avoid discussing controversial or painful family subjects. Do not talk about diet and exercise, what diet you're following, what diet this person's following. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about weight. Don't talk about your health, good or bad. This is not the time nor the place. Let me also back up to the beginning when you receive the RSVP. That is when you would want to let the host know if you have any medical food allergies. I'm going to say medical because it is disrespectful to the host, especially if they have several other guests attending, to have the host modify what they are serving because let's say you're following a specific weight loss diet. If you are so set in stone of not deviating from your diet plan, which you get to, you may want to decline dinner offers because it makes it difficult for the person hosting to make entrees that are specific to one person's diet, especially if they are hosting several people. I'm sure if you think about this, it would make sense. Much different if, let's say, my husband and I were having one couple over and both of them eat keto. That's different. But when you're hosting several people, it makes it a lot more challenging. This is very important to communicate this up front. You never show up at a dinner party and comment on the food and how you can't eat it. That is extremely disrespectful. Whether you are family or not, offer to clean up. Also, never ask to take leftovers home. If the host offers it and you would like to take her up on that offer, feel free to. 
but never ask. Don't overstay your welcome. This is another area where you want to watch for cues from the host. Typically, we can sense when it is time to leave. You never want to leave immediately after dinner. That is disrespectful as well. You always want to wait a little while and it's important when you leave that you always say goodbye to the host or hostess and you thank them. You keep it brief and short because there could be other people, other couples at the party that they have to attend to. So you don't strike up some conversation when you are standing by the door. You keep it brief and simple. Also, if it's a small party, you want to be sure to say goodbye to everyone. If it's a larger gathering, it's okay to only say goodbye to the host and not everyone else because that can be very time consuming and it can be distracting. The last tip that I have to offer is within two days of the party being over, it's very important for you to send a handwritten thank you. I do have a video where I talk about the significance of a thank you card. It's very important that you follow up and this should be done promptly. I try to have a thank you card already purchased on hand, ready to go before the day of the dinner party even comes because the next day while everything is fresh in my mind, I know that my words are going to come from a much warmer place because it's fresh in my mind. Always express how appreciative you are that they invited you and acknowledge how much work and effort they put into hosting. I'm going to end this video with a few common courtesies that I talk about in my dining etiquette video. It's really important to watch that. Stay tuned. In 2021, I will be doing a revision of that video. I've made some modifications and changes, and there are more common courtesies, dining etiquette and table manners that I would like to share with you also different situations that I have witnessed that I would like to impart on you. Common courtesies, don't talk with food in your mouth. Don't chew with your mouth open. Don't blow on your food. Don't slurp, blot, don't wipe when using your napkin, very important. Don't salt your food until you have tasted it. Keep the rim of your plate as clean as possible. Always pass the food to the right and always pass the salt and pepper together. Salt and pepper never separate. If someone asks for the pepper, the salt goes with it. Hold your glass properly. Tumbler glasses are held near the bottom, wine glasses are held by the stem, and a goblet is held by the bottom of the bowl. If a toast is made, it should only be done by the host and you simply raise your glass. Do not cling your glass with anyone. And when I say do not cling your glass with anyone, I mean ever. Just raise your glass, that's all you need to do. Stay tuned, my next video will be how to be a savvy host when you are having a dinner party. Coming to you in a couple more days. All right, thanks for joining me, take care.